We did. I'll let you check in, please. All right, we're on the record in the matter of the city of Wyandotte versus Angelina Doring, 24706 A and B and 192608. Council, your appearance, please. Attorney Corey Westmoreland appearing on behalf of Ms. Doring. Ms. Doring, would you please state your name? Angelina Doring. Can you just speak up, please, ma'am? Angelina Doring. All right. And so, Council, as to the arraignment on the new charge. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, we are pre prepared to waive a formal reading. My client stands mute. The court will waive the formal reading on your plea of not guilty for purpose of the arraignment. We'll schedule this matter for pretrial on June 18th. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess we'll do June 12th. And as to the probation violation, counsel of the court um, will arraign your client and will schedule this matter for a hearing date on June 12th as well at 10.45 a.m. Ma'am, it's alleged that you failed to appear for drug testing and failed to appear for workforce on your public intoxication. Uh, the matter you're on probation for for public intoxication. And so the court will um, enter plea of not guilty on your behalf for that matter. And counsel asked to bond. Yes, Your Honor, I would like you to know that Ms. Doring is uh, 31 years old. She currently resides in Wyandotte. She is a mother of three uh, and judge. Uh, each child actually has uh, is special needs. She's a stay-at-home mother and she takes care of all the children. Uh, after speaking with her, she did assure me she would be appearing at all future court dates. Um, you know, Judge, I, I would just ask that uh, all that be taken into consideration. Uh, the fact that uh, she is a stay-at-home mother to three special needs children. Uh, her, her husband is the sole uh, provider, but he's at home right now with the children, so he's unable to work at this time. Okay, ma'am, how old are your children? Nine, 12, and six. And my daughter just had her 30th bone surgery at U of M. On the 12th, she has to have 16 pins taken out. She's in like a body cast from her hips to her feet. And she just had bone removed in both legs and the pins are holding her body together right now. Okay, well, I am sorry to hear about that. However, ma'am, um, I hope you don't think this court's going to utilize that as a reason to um, give you a bond, a personal bond and release you because a couple of reasons. Number one, you failed to appear in this court on your probation violations, and you also have a pending warrant out of the city of Trenton as well. And so you have an issue with appearing in court. Um, and given the, um, the reason for the stop here in Wyandotte, based on the the, uh, the um, alleged retail fraud in Trenton, the court um, has some serious concerns that you're going to be appearing in court. The court's going to order on the 24706A matter a $7,500 10% bond. Ma'am, you don't have a valid license. So while it seems to be on your husband as far as working only, it's going to be on him for the transportation as well because you don't have a valid license. So you're not to drive a motor vehicle, ma'am, unless you're unless you clear your license. And as to the matter on 192608, the court's going to order a $3,500 10% bond. And ma'am, just so you're aware, even if this court um, granted you a personal bond, Trenton's coming to pick you up, so you wouldn't be released anyway. You're going to have your bond conditions. Anything else? Not this time, Judge. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go! Hand me my screen box. I'll go free. So on the record, in the matter of Antonio Cross, 103147R. Good morning, Judge. It's right. Corey Westmoreland appearing on behalf of Mr. Cross. Mr. Cross, would you please unmute yourself and state your name? Antonio Cross. Okay. And so today is the date uh, that we've been waiting for for 14 years for a probation violation. Mr. Cross is on probation for attempt possession controlled substance 
on the 2498 case and operative or visibly impaired on the 3147R case. And it's alleged that um, on the 2498 case, he missed probation appointments on December 1st of 2010, December 8th of 2010, did not comply with the workforce rules, missed payment. Also on the 3147R, it's alleged he failed to pay, failed to attend the ARMS 2 class. And counsel? Yes, Judge, after speaking with Mr. Cross, uh, at this time we are prepared to enter a guilty with an explanation plea and waive our right to any sort of contested hearing. Okay, and so Mr. Cross, please raise your right hand. Yes, I will. Okay, all right, and um, sir, as to the allegations that you heard, how do you plead? Guilty. You understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea? And that specifically the recommendation in these matters to revoke probation, close the case without improvement, $50 probation violation fee on each matter. The 3147R is recommended for 30 days jail. 2498 is recommended for 15 days jail. No. I didn't, I didn't, uh, we didn't address none of that. Well, that, that's the recommendation, sir. Do you want a moment to speak but, to your... Well, I, I, I did tell him that... The recommendation was jail, but I was going to try and allocute on his behalf. Okay. And so knowing that, Mr. Cross, do you want to continue with your plea? Um, can I have a moment to speak with the attorney again? Okay. We will do that in just one moment. I'll call another matter, and then we will recall this matter. Okay, so we're recalling the matter of Antonio Cross, 102498 103147R. All right. And so, counsel, your appearance again for the record, please. Attorney Corey Westmoreland, appearing on behalf of Mr. Cross. Mr. Cross, would you please unmute yourself and state your name for the record? Antonio Christopher Cross. Okay, very good. And so we're at the point where the court was asking you, sir, on board here, if you understood the possible penalty in this matter. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So knowing all that, do you want to continue with your plea? Yes, ma'am. All right, counsel, if you can please part here, your client. Sure. Mr. Cross, is it true that you were on probation out of the Wyandotte District Court? Yes. As a term and condition of probation, were you to adhere to all requests made by probation? Yes. Did you, in fact, miss probation appointments on December 1st and December 8th of 2010? Yes. Did you not uh, complete workforce? No, I didn't. Did you uh, miss uh, payments to the court? Yes, I did. Did you, did you fail to attend the ARMS program? Yes. And you understand that those are all violations of your probation? Yes. Satisfied, Judge. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the probation violations. All right, counsel. Yes, Judge. Um, after speaking with Mr. Cross, you know, I got to learn quite a bit about him. Uh, he's extremely apologetic for his actions. He, he did not mean to turn his back on this honorable court by any means. Uh, but at that time, he was going through a lot. I, I would like you to know he was homeless at the time. Uh, his brother had just passed away in 2010. But since then, he has gotten his life Back on back on track. He is gainfully employed full time, working for. He's a father of two. Judge, at this time, we're just asking for leniency on his behalf. Suspend any sort of jail time. Give him an opportunity uh, to complete his terms and conditions of probation, and show this honorable court not only did uh, he learn from his mistake, but uh, he wants to make good on it. That's why. Uh, he appeared on his own recognizance. He contacted the court and asked, how, how can he get this cleared up and behind him? Uh, he, he's doing so because he wants to set a good example for, for his children. So with that being said, Judge, I, I'm simply just asking for leniency on behalf of Mr. Cross. I, I know that he absconded for several years, but uh, you know, I, I, I would like to see him prove not only to himself, but to this honorable court that uh, he, he can complete the terms and conditions of his probation. All right. And so, Mr. Cross, how was it that you decided to answer this warrant now? 
Say that one more time, Your Honor. How was it that you decided to start taking care of this, these warrants today or now? Well, I've been I've been trying to make payments, but they didn't accept any payments because of the uh, the bench warrant and because of the probation violation. I had to uh, come in front of it, but. I just want you to know I did have another probation that told me to clear up warrants or whatever. But even even with that, Your Honor, I I set a bond. I mean, I posted a bond. I still didn't have to come back to court. I didn't have to comply. Only thing they wanted to do was see that uh, it was on my own as far as to keep going further with that. But they the only thing they wanted to see that I posted a bond and that could have been that and I could have still discount. I've been for years, for the last few years, trying to make payments and stuff like that because it's on my name anytime i anytime i have a run-in with the two authorities or anything like that they always that's always gonna be on my name i wanted to get in, in front of that and if i just wanted you to know that i i can't complete anything that they you know any any classes any of that back then i didn't have money everything costed at least a hundred dollars to do each class uh community service it was like i had like 15 days i did do some of the days a, a few of the days as far as the uh the workforce i missed uh or i was late for one and the reschedule it was an extra hundred dollars so i was i was really in a bind your honor and if you reinstate it or just give me another opportunity i i promise i can i would you know comply a hundred percent um if i took a drug test i don't I haven't smoked marijuana in about six and a half, seven years. I don't. So I just want you to know, like, I I, I really can't afford to do any jail time. I got uh, kids. I got child support for one of my sons, and I do take care of my kids. So, and I've been at my job for five years. I'm, so I, I really just want an opportunity to clear my name. Okay. So... Sir, where you said you're on probation somewhere else. Where is that? And what is that for? Um, Troy, Michigan. Uh, um, open a um, OWI. I don't know exactly the charge, but it was that in that nature, Your Honor. So you're on probation, essentially, for um, <clears throat> operating while intoxicated, and which you didn't appear for or complete anything, and then you picked up another one. When did you pick up that one, sir? Just recently, uh, in February, I want to say. And let's see here. The matter that you have, which I don't have a copy of the police report from, on your operating or visibly impaired case, but given the fact that I see that there is a restitution amount of $5,174.66, tells me that you had some type of accident with that one, correct? Say that one more time. You said with that restitution? I presume that there is an accident. Is that where that? Is that where that's from? Yes. Well, um, nobody was injured, but it was uh, a, some uh, signs that was damaged and uh, police crews. And I can make a payment towards that. Uh, I had a bond posted and I get paid this week. I could have made a, a payment towards the uh, restitution this week. So, sir, here's the problem that I have. The problem that I have is that you're on probation for two matters in this court, and you didn't do anything. In fact, you did nothing. Nothing. It's been nine years. And you're on probation for the exact same offense that you failed to do anything on in this court. Well, I, Your Honor, so you're I, asking I, this court to not send you to jail. Your Honor, I did do I I did some of the class. I mean, I did some of the workforce, and I was complying with the drug test every day. But the the drug, I mean the the workforce that I was doing when I sh I had to pay a hundred bucks, I didn't have I didn't have the money to pay for the um, actual class. I couldn't do the class. It wasn't like I could do the class. I had to pay to do the class. I had to pay a hundred dollars each class. It was like fifteen hundred dollars. So that's that's where some of, I believe that's where some of the uh the money that I owe come from because I had I think fifteen classes, I mean fifteen days workforce. There's no talking in court. Huh? Here's what I'm going to do, sir. Here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to adopt the recommendation. So the court's going to revoke probation, close the case without improvement on both cases. On 2498, the court's going to order a $50 probation violation fee, 15 days jail. I'm going to suspend that jail. We're doing a jail review on August 13th at 10.15 a.m. We're going to see, sir, what it is you've been doing in the interim and whether or not you're making good on what your statements are. Can you, can you um, tell me what's exactly what that mean again? Judge, if I may. On the 10... On the 103147R matter, the court's going to adopt a recommendation, revoke probation, 30 days jail, suspended, jail review, August 13th, $50 probation violation fee as well. And sir, you need to start making some of these payments, specifically restitution. <clears throat> I can do that. Just, Your Honor, can my, can my bond, can my bond, it was $500, can that go towards it? And then I can make another on, payment. Sir. When did you post your bond? When did you post the bond? For this case, uh, to get this uh, court date, I had to pay five hundred dollars cash. We can, yes, we can apply the bond to these matters, uh, but you still owe uh, quite a bit of money. Okay, I can make another payment of uh, three hundred dollars. I can make a payment of three. I get paid every. I get paid by weekly, Your Honor. So I can make a payment each time I get paid. <laughs> Starting from this Friday. Make sure you're making those payments, sir, so that when you come back for your jail review, your balance will be significantly reduced. Okay. And you said that I would get a would I get a letter in the mail letting me know exactly the date and time and everything like that? You're getting it right now, sir. So you need to write it down, put it in your calendar, whatever you need One. to do. All right, thank you. Um, let's go on the record in the matter of the city of Southgate versus Autumn Ebola, 28th District Court case number 230983CM. And counsel, your appearance, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Edward Holmberg on behalf of the defendant. Your Honor, today is date time for sentencing. I did go over the PSI with the defendant. There are no errors or admissions. We would just like to address one of the recommendations. All right, and Ms. Ebola, your name, please, for the record. Autumn Ebola. Okay, and Ms. Qualton, would you like to please state and spell your first and last names for the record? And you should please unmute. Ms. Qualton? Hi, okay, Alicia. Um, A L I C I A K W A L T O N. For sentencing on your client's plea to an amended charge of disorderly conduct disturbing the peace. The assault and battery um, was, was dismissed. And counsel asked to the report, are there any corrections that need to be made? No, if the report is like the report is factually accurate and there are no errors or admissions. We would just like I said, the only thing we'd like to address is the rec one recommendation, Your Honor. Okay. And yes, as to the recommendation, counsel. They are recommending six months, pro I mean, sorry, one year probation. I, I don't think probation is really necessary in this matter. The defendant has absolutely no criminal history at all. Um, it's, it, it's an, she's got a, it's a probationable misdemeanor. It's a non-serious misdemeanor. She has, hasn't had any contact with the, the complainant since this matter happened. It was more of a neighborhood dispute where, you know, children were involved, her child was involved, and it got a little emotional. I would ask that she just be placed on uh, no probation or non-reporting probation mm -hmm. at this time, Your Honor. What would you have like the court to know, Ms. Paulson? Okay. Um, this is not um, a, um insignificant neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor instance. I would ask that the video be played in court so that everyone is made aware of um, the behavior and choices. I do want to say that this has been excessively stressful for me and my family. I've never had anything like this happen to me before. Um, Mrs. Evola verbally assaulted my minor child. They approached my child about an issue. Um, she trespassed on my property after I gave warning. Um, she destroy destroyed my property with total disregard, and I also warned her. She um, as assaulted me verbally and physically. She then assaulted her husband, both verbal, verbally and physically, when he tried to restrain her 
And during that physical fight, they knocked over their minor child. Um, after I, I gave multiple warnings, be careful, you're going to knock over your son. Um, I've had nightmares. I've had to take time off work. <clears throat> Um, when it was beginning, um, when I could speak with the uh, Southgate Police Department because I wasn't sure what she would do because she had verbally assaulted my minor children, swearing and carrying on. Um, she's disrupted my sense of security at my home. Um, that's pretty significant. Um, she's disrupt disrupted the peace on our street. Um, all right, I've been here for 10 years. We've never had any problem between neighbors. He completely disregarded my property, um, disregarded my dignity, my children's dignity, her husband's dignity, her son, and herself. Um, I do want the best for her and her family. I, I don't want the situation. And the behavior was just... To, to physically assault someone, it, it's, um, it's, it's a significant thing. It's not a neighborly thing. It is not a neighborly thing. Um, in the best interest of peace, I'm not going to search for any, um, any re financial restitution from her. But I would, I would ask that this be taken seriously. I'm not sure why it isn't because... Video evidence shows she physically assaulted me and endangered her child and physically assaulted her. And none of us deserved that. There's no, no reason for that. So I would ask that some support is given to her in any way that you would see fit and that she do be held accountable because to live next door to someone who, who has assaulted you disregarded the safety of their own children now what what will she do with mine please take this seriously judge and i appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share what i'm what my experience has been all right thank you miss colton um counsel who has the video do you know that was the video uh the prosecutor had it at the time so like i said we had it in part of discovery i don't have it with me now I would but actually like to review the video. Posture. I'm sorry? Yes. I, I would like to review the video. I think that would be helpful in this court for this court to um, determine the appropriate sentence. Um, I will state because she's eligible under 771.1 status, so there would have to be a term of probation. Um, <clears throat> but the court is interested um, to see the, uh, the video to determine the appropriate conditions based upon that. I mean, I could talk to the, I could speak with uh, Amelia, or the prosecutor about it. I just, it's my own, this, I'm, she still has it. I, she would, I know she didn't know about today's date, that she didn't get notice of it. Um, I can ask her if you want to, I don't, you, you, can you give me one moment? I can just ask her real quick if she still has it. Give me one second. Okay, yes, all right, we'll go off the record for a moment. <clears throat> okay, yes, Mr. Holmberg? She, Amelia does not have it. She'd have to request it again from the police department. Um, once it, once basically the case was set, there was a plea entered and it was to disloyalty conduct, not to the, uh, she d doesn't have it any longer. So it might be a while okay. for her to get it. That's if the police didn't destroy the, their video. If, so they okay, didn't take so over let it. <clears throat> Let's go back to the record. We're on the back on the record matter of Autumn Bola. So counsel, Ms. Qualton states that she has the video <clears throat> still on her phone. Okay. I am glad you're here. Sorry. There's, I, my understanding is there's two versions of the video, however. Well, so that was my, that was going to be my question. So let me do this. Let's adjourn this to next week. Are you okay. on the docket next week, counsel? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can, make, I'll make, I'll be available. That okay. way, counsel, sounds you good. can view the video um, and whatnot. Okay. Sounds good, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Qualton, are you available next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Um, I'll double check, um, but this is pretty important. So I know that we've had a struggle to try to get things wrapped up. So I'm sure all of us want to be done with this. 
So will 115 next week work for you, Ms. Colton? Um, yeah, I believe so. If there's something major going on, I'll um, let your court know. Okay, so um, Ms. Ebola, does that work for you as well? Yes. Okay, and then counsel, your client can even bring in all of her documentation from her um, treatment that she's been receiving, even just uh, not necessarily what she's in treatment for, but just the dates of her appointments that she's that she's um, scheduled and completed. Will do. Thank you very much, Your Honor. All right, bonding conditions are continued, and the court will um, see you all next week, 115 at the 28th District Court to complete this. All right? Thank you. And Ms. Qualtz, there's that, multiple please. videos. Please make sure you have them all, okay? Thank you. And then we are on the record in the matter of the city of Wynette versus, or I'm sorry, Christian Hamlet, where we call in 24143A. Attorney Corey Westmoreland, on behalf of Hamblin. Ms. Hamblin, would you please state your name for the record? Christian Hamblin. All right, today's the date scheduled for probation violation. Ms. Hamblin's on probation for possession of controlled substance. And it's alleged she failed to appear for drug testing five times, and she tested positive for marijuana on April 27th. And counsel? That's correct, Judge. At the time, I did have an opportunity to speak to Ms. Hamblin. Uh, we are prepared to waive any sort of contested hearing and enter, enter a guilty plea on her behalf. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. And you heard the plea that your attorney placed on the record, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's both allegations. How do you plead? Guilty. And you understand the recommendation in this matter is for you to continue to complete all terms of probation, revoke your under advisement status, begin your testing, 15 days jail, suspended, and the court would be waiving your probation violation fee. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. And then the court would be waiving your your violation fee. Okay. Okay. And so you understand the recommendation? Yes. Do you, do you understand the recommendation that probation has uh, recommended for your sentence? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand this court can follow that recommendation whole in part or not at all? Yes, ma'am. And knowing all that, do you want to continue with your plea? Yes, ma'am. And Counselor Megan, please voir dire your client. Sure. Ms. Hamblin, are you currently on probation out of the Wyandotte District Court? Yes, I am. As a term and condition of your probation, are you to not test positive for any drugs or alcohol that you're not prescribed? Yes. Did you, in fact, test positive for marijuana on April 27th of this year? Yes, but I've also told the judge I'm waiting for my levels to go down, but I can't afford the stuff at the moment. All right. Uh, did you also fail to test as ordered on April 29th, May 10th, May 13th, May 23rd, and May 28th? Due to my lack of income, yes. Okay, but you you weren't able to test, correct? I can test. I just don't have the money. But on those dates, you did not test. Is that correct? I did not. I did, due to my income, I did not. Okay. And you understand that that's a violation of your probation, correct? I understand. All right. Satisfied, Judge. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, volunteering, factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the probation violation. Indicate technical violations one through six and counsel as to. The recommendation. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Hamblin is apologetic for her actions. Uh, she has taken responsibility for it. I would like to know that she is a mother of three. Uh, she currently is not working. She collects disability and is on a very, very limited income. Uh, taking that, Judge, I would just be asking for a leniency on behalf of Ms. Hamblin. When did you stop working, ma'am? I lost my job a few weeks ago when my car got repulled because I couldn't afford it no more. It's been about two weeks, three weeks now, two and a half. Okay, how far how far was work from your home, ma'am? It was in Taylor, and I live in Ecorse. Um, I have a view today at three at O'Brien's in Ecorse down the street for me to where I can walk. Okay, I showed that you're in Taylor. When did you move to Ecorse? I've been in e-course. I've been taking care of my father. 
And I worked in Taylor because that's where I used to live. And I had a vehicle. I didn't I didn't think all this stuff was going to land on me. Did you inform permission that you um, were no longer working? Yes, I did. And I even yeah, let her so, know that the car was repoed. Okay, ma'am. Wait. When did you stop working? I'd like to know the date. The date. I I would have to look on my other phone. Last day was. I want to say the twenty third of May. Yes, yeah, so it was May twenty third. Okay. So. That was your last day at work. No, it's my last check. So my last day at work was the, the 16th. Okay. So why did you test on April 29th? April 20th. I didn't have the money, hun. I seriously you don't. Just call me, hun. I'm sorry. Yeah. Judge. Sorry. But what I don't get it. I, I can't afford the $20. If there's another way of me going about me being able to test, I don't mind the test. But I can't afford it at the moment. I don't well, mind. You're on probation for possession of controlled substance. I understand. And this is my first offense ever. And I was unaware that I had to pay every single time I dropped. This is my first time ever going through something like this. Well, ma'am, who do you think would be absorbing that cost if it wasn't you? I had no idea. I was unaware. Okay, ma'am, you may have been unaware, but in, in your thought process, who did you think would be absorbing that cost? Never even thought about it, ma'am, until I actually went through and experienced it. Okay, so you say that you don't have the money for drug testing, but yet there was cocaine found in your possession. That's not free. And then there was marijuana in your system on April 27th. That's not free. Residue is that so, that was underneath the passenger. I had to take the blame for somebody. It's my vehicle. But you would never see cocaine in my system, guarantee you. Okay. Well, marijuana is not free. And that was in your system. So somehow you have okay. the funds to pay for marijuana. I don't have the funds. I have other people. I have friends. Okay, those I friends, friends might want to help me out. Me and smoke around me. I haven't smoked since I've told you I wouldn't. That's why I told you my levels will be, you will see my levels dropping as soon as I can start we affording. Haven't, we haven't been able to see your levels dropping because you haven't gone for testing. I been after the first one. Yes, okay. And then you also failed to appear in Lincoln Park on April nine or uh, in April for your, for a matter that you have. What do I have in Lincoln Park? I've only had two parking okay. tickets in Lincoln Park. Wow. Well, you may have failed to appear to make that payment. I don't know, but it's showing $350 cash bond. I'm going to look into that. So how are you supporting yourself and your children if you um, do not have any father. income, ma'am? I'm staying with my father. Okay. And my three kids. I'm sorry? Me and my three children are with my father. Okay, so how are you supporting yourself? I mean, I understand you're staying with your father, but how are you providing for food, for all bridge that? Card. I got a bridge card. Here's what I'm going to do in this matter. I'm going to schedule the sentencing in this matter to be next Tuesday, June 11th at 11 a.m. I'm going to have you come down to the court and test today. Okay. What time is okay. your interview, ma'am? At three today, um, I would have to walk up there, so it's going to take me a while. Okay. Well, that's fine. I mean, you're just on Fifth Street, any course, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So are you south of Southfield or north of Southfield? I am on the opposite side, so I'm out of drive. Okay. All right. Well, you should be able to get here, test, and get back before your interview. Okay. Um, all right. There's that way I can do it in the morning so my dad can drive me? Um, no, ma'am. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt right now. It's today. No it's problem. Right. It's Thank you. Today. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. In the matter of <clears throat> James Bruner, 231994.
And counsel? Attorney Corey Westmoreland, carrying on behalf of Mr. Bruner. Mr. Bruner, would you please state your name for the record? Okay. And um, Ms. Walker, your appearance for your name for the record, please. Yes, it's Erica Walker. And today's the date scheduled for probation violation hearing on the March 3rd matter. Mr. Bruner was sentenced in October of 2023. And on April 30th of 2024, there were three probation violation matters um, that were on the docket. Mr. Bruner pled guilty to the violations of April 10th and April 15th. And the court sentenced Mr. Bruner to 15 days jail, 30 days on the alcohol tether upon release. As to the March 3rd matter, Mr. Bruner pled not guilty. And the March 3rd was alleging um, positive for cocaine and positive for alcohol. And if I recall correctly, Mr. Bruner was insistent that there that he did not ingest any cocaine um, and, he, and he was not disputing the alcohol portion of it. So the court um, set this matter for a hearing for today's date with the lab to be present. And is that accurate so far? That's correct, Judge. So, Ms. Walker, um, I think I'm going to ask just a couple of brief questions, and Mr. Westmoreland, you can follow up if you'd like, sure. unless you'd like to ask the questions. I, I just have questions okay. regarding the, the amount that, that was tested. Okay. Mercy. Go, go, you can oh. go ahead, Council. Ms. Walker. Uh, good, 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 good morning. Good morning. Could you explain to me just exactly how much uh, came back as a uh, positive test on behalf of Mr. Brewer? Um, yes, he came back positive for um, benzoecholine, which is a cocaine metabolite, at 13,135 nanograms per milliliter. He also came back positive for ethyl gluconoride and ethyl sulfate, which are um, alcohol metabolites. For the ethyl gluconoride, it was at 730 um, 737 nanograms per milliliter. For the ethyl sulfide, it was 116 nanograms per milliliter. And then also, too, for the um, THC OOH, which is marijuana, it came back at 133 nanograms per milliliter. I, I want to focus your attention on uh, specifically the uh, cocaine metabolite that came back as 13,135. Can you explain that to me? Just exactly, you know, how much would somebody have to actually use to test that high? Uh, I wouldn't be able to um, to associate a dose with the um, the amount used. I wouldn't know that, you know, because everybody's um, body um, is different and the metabolism is different. So I wouldn't be able to um, be able to um, associate that the amount. Okay, well, what, what's typical? What, what's the range that you guys test for? What, what's the minimum? Um, you know, I, for the, um, benzoecholine, I wouldn't be able to say anything. I can just definitely tell you anything above our cutoff is considered as positive or detected and anything below that is considered as negative or non-detected. Okay. Well, does, is 13,000, is that typical when somebody tests? I mean, it, it can, I wouldn't be able to say, cause I wouldn't know how much he ingests. I mean, ingested at all. So I wouldn't I know. I can't speculate. To explain to you how much oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. The, the recording can't get both when you're, when, when you're both talking. I'm not asking you to uh, guess at how much he potentially used. I'm asking that reading is 13,000. Is that on the higher end of what you typically see when people test positive for cocaine? I've seen, um, I can just only say I've seen as high as 100,000. So it, it varies from person to person. So I wouldn't still be able to say, you know, only thing I can just say that it's, it was detected. Okay. I, I don't have any further questions. Okay. And so is there anything based upon that test result that, would lead you to believe that it was something other than ingested? No, no, ma'am. Do you know, would there be any other way that reading would be positive for cocaine other than, would there be any other way it would be positive for cocaine? No. But you wouldn't be able to testify as to when that ingestion occurred? 
based upon the levels, correct? Um, I, the only thing I can just say was um, just that um, prior, you know, it was collected within 96 hours of the um, collection date. Okay, any further questions, Council, from those questions? Just one other. Uh, Ms. Walker, is it possible to test positive for cocaine if you were to ingest it and not use it in a traditional form that people use it? Um, exposure. Snorting it, I suppose. Yeah, um, exposure can happen um, in different ways. You know, there's different modes of exposure. So um, I I can't say, you know, what the mode that type of exposure was because I don't know. But I can just definitely um, tell you it is it was ingested in the body and um, present in the urine. Okay, so, so there are multiple ways that you can ingest cocaine, correct? Yes, sir. I don't have any other questions. Okay. All right. And so, um, no, no other questions, Council? No. Okay. I, I don't have any further questions either. Um, thank you very much for coming in to uh, testify via Zoom, Ms. Walker. Thank you, have Your Honor. Day. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. You as well. No problem. All right. And so, Council? Uh, Judge, at this time, um, Mr. Bruner is going to be accepting responsibility that he did in fact test positive for cocaine. Uh, he's not exactly sure why or how. Um, at the time, he was on a cruise that he was given permission to uh, travel out of the country for. They, they did come in contact, they met some people on the cruise. Potentially, they may have had was it, it with Mexican people. Is that what you said? With, with, with what kind of people? He met some people on the cruise. Oh, met some people on the cruise. All right. Um, they potentially had it. He may have picked something up. You know, I talked with him at length regarding it. I, I did tell him that uh, clearly he's responsible for everything he does put in his body. He understands that he's taking responsibility for it today. He's just in complete and utter shock that he did test positive for it, because it's not something he uses, not something he partakes in. Uh, you know, he, he has been forthcoming, upfront, open and honest with, with me. This entire time, as you saw here, he pled guilty to the uh, alcohol violations. As far as cocaine, he's dumbfounded. So I, I was hoping that uh, Ms. Walker would have a little bit more information, but here we are. Okay, Mr. Bruner, please step forward. You have to step over there by your attorney. Please raise your right hand. Yes, sir. All right, so you heard what your attorney placed on the record, correct? Yes, I'm sorry? Yes, sir. As the allegation he tested positive for cocaine and alcohol on March 3rd, how do you plead? I accept responsibility. So you plead? I'm sorry? Yes. And, all right, counsel, if you can please bar to your client. Sure. Mr. Bruner, are you currently on probation through the Wyandotte District Court? Yes, sir. As a term and condition of your probation, are you to not test positive for any drugs or alcohol that you're not prescribed? Yes, sir. Did you, in fact, test positive for cocaine? Yes, sir. You understand that that's a violation of your probation? I do. Satisfied, Judge. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea. And... Council asked for the recommendation. Judge, I, I believe the recommendation has already been fulfilled. Uh, the original recommendation was 15 days jail. He turned himself in that day. He completed that uh, in addition to the alcohol tether as well. As I've already indicated, he's dumbfounded, but he takes full responsibility for it. Moving forward, this is not going to be an issue again. After speaking with him, I even pointed out the fact that his probate, he would have been eligible for early termination at this point. Been a model probationer up until these three violations. He, has, uh, he understands moving forward that he's not gonna be violating again. Uh, I, I truly don't think he's gonna put himself in this position. So I, I would just ask for leniency on his behalf at this time. So Mr. Bruner, if you were to test today, what's in your system? I'm good. And I just want to ask you to too. Okay. And you're not working, right? Uh, I coach softball and t-ball. That's it. Oh, that's a volunteer. You don't get paid for that. Do you? Well, I don't pay. you get paid for that? I wish. 
right? So that's volunteer stuff, right? So, and I understand that, you know, financially you may not have to work because of the survivor benefits that your children get or that you get um, as a result of your wife's passing. But I think working would be a good um, idea for you. My girlfriend thinks so as well. And like I told you last time, I'd like to move out of state. So I would like to find something once I get out of it, you know, because they're thinking about Nevada. Um, it's just, I have no reason to be in Michigan. I lost my wife, like, you know, and it's just, I'm tired of the winters and I'd like to go somewhere where I could just, you know, have more sunny days, spend more time outside and just, you know, live a better life. Um, but now I'm kind of stuck unless that can transfer because um, I am still actively searching for homes. I just kind of don't know if I can pull the trigger. And I'd like to, you know, thought about going to work for myself, making hot sauces or maybe starting a food truck because I really like to cook. So I have options, keeping them open. But Well, so here's what I'm going to say. Okay. If you are looking to relocate and you have a location, um, you know, the kids are enrolled in school, what have you, the court's not going to prevent you from moving. Okay. You have to have a plan. Yes. Yeah, so not just, okay, I'm moving, right? right. Um, the court won't prevent that, won't prevent you from moving. But in the meantime, until you move, sir, this court's going to order that you are to find gainful employment. Okay. Sounds good to me. My girlfriend advocates for that all the time. She's like, you just need to, she's like, you're better when you do stuff. And she's right. Well, it, it helps, not that you have a purpose having the kids, but it helps on your purpose to your day. Exactly. Right? right. So 30 job applications per week. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. Too. All, right. All right. Off the record. All right. We are going on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Kenneth Beaudry, 24709. And appearance. Um, or I'm sorry, your name for the record, Detective Harris? Detective Haskin, wind up police department. I mean, dang it, I did that earlier too. Detective Haskin. I do. All right, thank you. And you may proceed on the warrant. On June 2nd, 2024, I was contacted by Detective Sergeant Grove, who relayed the following information to me. Kenneth Beaudry, who lives at 18. Wind up Michigan was confronted by a group known as 814 Pred Hunters, led by Brian Knapp, who claimed Beaudry has been messaging underage decoys, sexually explicit messages. Knapp confronted Beaudry, who then admitted to communicating with the girls, knowing they were underage, as well as admitting to having child sexually abusive material on his digital devices. Wind up officer Staphicus and Cox were dispatched to the address where Beaudry admitted to them he possessed child sexually abusive material and willingly showed them the material. A search warrant was completed and the devices were confiscated. Beaudry agreed to speak with detectives about the incident. During the interview, Beaudry admitted to texting three girls he believed to be 15 years old, 15 years old, and 12 years old, and sending them sexually explicit messages. Um, he stated he was going to meet them in Pennsylvania on May, 21st, or May 31st to party and have sex with them, but then decided not to. Beaudry stated approximately one year ago, he added a woman on Facebook who he began exchanging messages with. Beaudry stated the woman was asking for money, but Beaudry told her she was too old for him. Beaudry stated the woman said she had a nine-year-old daughter and agreed to send Beaudry sexually abusive material of the child to him in exchange for money. Beaudry admitted to paying her $100 through Western Union for the video. Beaudry agreed to show me the video of the girl, which was on his iPad. The video shows an obviously prepubescent Asian girl who dances around, removing her clothing and becoming nude. Beaudry also agreed to show us his phone, which had two photos of underage Asian females topless. Beaudry stated he has received approximately 30 child sexual abuse material in the form of photographs of nude underage girls, which he has since deleted from his cell phone. Upon examination of any witness, I find the offenses charged were committed and that there's probable cause we defend it committed the offense. Counsel, your appearance, please. Good afternoon, Judge Attorney Corey Westmoreland, appearing on behalf of Mr. Beaudry. Mr. Beaudry, would you please state your name for the record? Sam. Okay. Um, Kenneth Mark Boudry. All right, thank you. Counsel, I ask for the arraignment. At this time, Judge, we are prepared to waive a formal reading. My client stands mute. 
The court's going to waive the formal reading. Sir, you have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. The court's also signed the petition in order for court appointed attorney for following matters. You have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. You also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes, Your Honor. The court's going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. Schedule this matter for a probable cause conference on June 13th at 9.45 a.m. And counsel as to bond. Yes, Your Honor. I would like you to know that my client uh, currently resides in Wyandotte. He is gainfully employed at B. He's not currently on probation or parole. He has no other pending matters. And after speaking with him at length, he did assure me that he would be appearing at all future court dates and he has no history of absconding. I just ask that all that be taken into account when assessing a bond on behalf of my client. All right. Um, there's no that's his employer. Did he change? I, I believe they're, uh, they're an entity that works with. Oh. So he, he works right across the street. Okay, Mr. Boudry, are you currently on probation parole anywhere, sir? No, Your Honor. Are you currently out on bond in any other jurisdiction? No, Your Honor. Have you ever failed to appear in court for any reason, sir? No, Your Honor. All right, Detective Haskins, would uh, you like to address bond? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Boudry does live in the neighborhood in Wyandotte where there are many children present. Um, I believe that he does pose a considerable risk to children of this uh, neighborhood and of society in general. Um, so I'm going to request a bond of $250,000 cash. Sir, do you have any of your own children? Yes, I do. How yes, Your Honor, children? I do. My oldest is 40. 38, 28, and 26. Do you I have, have grandchildren. any grandchildren? And how old are your grandchildren? 18, 5, and 3. And do they all live locally, or do you have regular contact with them? Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the closest are the two youngest, which are in the city of Woodhaven. And the other one lives down, in, and the older one lives in Monroe. Given the nature of the allegations in this matter, <clears throat> the court um, does find that Mr. Boudry presents a significant risk to the public. The court's going to order a $250,000 cash bond with the following bond conditions in the event bond is posted. Do not have any contact with the complaining witness or victims in this matter. Do not to have any contact with any prosecution witnesses. No contact is phone, contact, text message, email, social media, third party, anything of the like. Do not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs that are not prescribed. Do not to possess or have access to any firearms and or any weapons. You are to have a GPS tether, house arrest, may work with proof shown, <clears throat> to the tether agent. And not to have access to any computers, smartphones, tablets, etc. You're not to have access to the internet, social media, anything of the like. You're not to have any contact with any minor children. Any questions? No, Your Honor. I got a copy of our bond conditions and we'll see you back on the 13th. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Thank Your you. Honor. Thank you. Okay, we're on the record. The matter of the state of Michigan was Jacob Shav Shavy. I don't know. 24710. Detective, your name for the record, please. Detective Devin Geiger, Wyandotte Police Department. You. All right, thank you. And mm -hmm. May proceed on the warrant. On June 3rd, 2024, approximately 2.50 in the morning, Wyandotte officers Austin Sloan and Connor Harris were involved in a traffic uh, related incident near uh, West Jefferson and Mill and Eight Course, just outside the Wyandotte border. They were finishing up the stop 
when they observed a vehicle, a Dodge Caravan, dra travel past their location towards uh, the wind-up border and was operating without a clearly visible license plate attached to the rear vehicle. Uh, the officers uh, entered their vehicle and uh, proceeded to go after the vehicle to effect a traffic stop. They observed the vehicle then turn westbound on Emmons, um, and they observed the vehicle traveling uh, westbound near 6th Street. Uh, at that point, they observed that the vehicle was traveling at a high rate of speed and was disregarding stop signs. Uh, they they uh, continued after the motor vehicle, where they continued into the Lincoln Park border near Fourth Street and M85 uh, and Emmons. Uh, there, they attempted to effect a traffic stop using their um, their, their uh, lights on their fully marked patrol vehicle. The vehicle proceeded through the red light and continuing on westbound on Emmons. Um, the officers continued chase. The vehicle eventually came to an abrupt stop at 50. Pulled up onto a front lawn. The occupant and operator of the vehicle exited the vehicle briskly and, and then proceeded to go into the residence and close the door while the officers were given chase. Um, eventually, a woman came to the door as the officers were attempting to get contact at the house, identified as a Sherry Shave, who's the mother of uh, the defendant. Uh, eventually, she did provide permission to enter the house, and it, it, she advised that the subject that the officers were following was Jacob, and he should be in the home. Uh, eventually, Officer Connor Harris located Mr. Shave in the basement, hiding underneath the blanket. Um, while they uh, they performed a pat down on Mr. Shave, they located a plastic cell phone bag in his left pocket of his chest, which uh, was a, like a white chalky substance. Uh, subsequently, field tested positive for crack cocaine, which was approximately point or two point six six grams worth. Um, inventory search of the vehicle, they located a backpack. And on the front passenger seat, uh, the open intox in the vehicle, uh, narcotic paraphernalia, as well as there was a white pill bottle in a pocket, which had a orange pill, which later was identified as hydro, hydromorphone hydrochloride. Uh, MAP's report was done conducting a four-year range, which uh, showed that he has no prescription history for that narcotic, which is a Schedule II. Uh, he has a prior criminal history of a felony conviction for felony police officer assaulting, resisting, obstructing, which he pled guilty uh, October 17, 2023. That is it, Your Honor. All right, Pat, is witness? The court finds <clears throat> that the offenses charged are committed. There's probable cause we defend to commit those offenses. And counsel, your appearance, please. Attorney Corey Westmoreland appearing on behalf of Mr. Shave. At this time, Judge, we are prepared to waive a formal reading. My client stands mute. Sir, your name for the record, please. Jacob Shave. All right. And the court will waive the formal reading. Sir, you have the right to have an attorney if you cannot represent you. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? Yes. The court's also signed the petition in order for a court-appointed attorney for felony matters. And, sir, you have the right to be presumed innocent to proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. You also <clears throat> may have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights? Yes. The court's going to enter plea of not guilty. We have scheduled this matter for probable cause conference on June 13th at 9.25 a.m. And counsel asked to bond. Yes, Your Honor, I would like you to know that Mr. Shave currently is residing uh, in Lincoln Park. He lives with his parents. Uh, as you're aware, he is currently on probation. Uh, he's currently unemployed at this time, but after speaking with him, you did assure me that he would be appearing at all future court dates. I would just respectfully ask that all that be taken into account when assessing a bond on his behalf. Hey, Mr. Shavey, how do you pronounce your last name, sir? Uh, Jacob Shave. Shade. Mr. Shade, when's the last time you were employed? To be completely honest, it was before my lungs collapsed in 2020. So what have you been doing to support yourself, sir, in the last four years? Um, I have, I'm a handyman. I like do side jobs, um, little fixer upper kind of situations, just little things. Um, sir, sir um, just an observation. If you're not working, 
then there's nothing for your job to be on the, your handyman work to be on the side of. That would be your work. It would be a side job. It's not on the side of anything. And so, sir, do you make enough to support yourself doing that work? I mean, I literally make enough to just get by. Okay, so then why aren't you working, sir? <laughs> why aren't you working a full-time job, sir? Honestly, I just... Okay, I was on the run for a long time. I had a lot of warrants. I literally had just gotten back on track of attempting to get my life together, basically. And I took a step in the wrong direction, you could say. And I relapsed. And you're on probation I, I, out of Lincoln Park. Sir, you're on, wait. No, you're on probation out of Southgate. Or, well, you're on probation out of Southgate. You had some drug charges dismissed. And fleeing and eluding, you pled guilty to. And you're on probation. And now you have the exact same charges. I know you're on. I'm trying. I'm, I'm hoping. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You also have pending charges for Southgate from March of this year, even though you're on with him for felony dangerous drugs. Okay. Well, Det Detective Geiger, Esteban. Uh, no drugs or alcohol since there was mention of open intox in the motor vehicle. There is um, at this time field test of positive crack cocaine. Uh, Lean shows that he's uh, has a suspended license, so not to operate a motor vehicle unless um, authorized to do so. Uh, just to assure his presence in court, uh, ten thousand ten percent. Detective, I can appreciate um, the low bond request, but this court's going to order a one hundred thousand dollar ten percent bond. Mister Shave is on probation currently and is now charged with the exact same offenses that he's currently on probation for. And he has pending charges out of the same jurisdiction he's on probation. Sir, you are a danger to yourself and to society. You also have um, previous failure to appear, and the court wants to make sure you're going to appear. So therefore, the court's ordering a $100,000 percent bond. You are in the event you post bond, you are not to possess and consume any alcohol or drugs that are not prescribed. You are not to operate a motor vehicle without a valid license. You are to have a GPS tether. You are to participate in random testing. Anything else? Anything else, counsel? Not this time, Judge. All right, thank you. Thank you, Honor. I think you have a good day. Let's go off the record. All right, we're on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Raphael Mitchell, 24708. And detective, your name for the record, please. Detective Devin Geiger, why not police department? All right, and you've already, you've already been sworn in, so you're still under oath. You may proceed on the warrant. Okay, on uh, June 2nd, 2024, approximately 2,300 hours, uh, officers John Berry and Tyler Gore were on patrol in the two-man car in the area of Biddle and Goddard in the city of Wyandotte. Officers saw a 2008 Buick driving southbound on Biddle with a burnt-out driver's side headlight. A burnt out passenger side brake light and a lean check of the license plate showed the plates to be expired from 9 12 2023. Officers stopped the vehicle for the above violations and spoke to the driver, who was later identified as Mitchell. Officers asked Mitchell for his driver's license, registration, and proof of insurance. While speaking with Mitchell, officers noticed he appeared to be very nervous, keeping his hands raised in the air, only provided officers with the driver's license and was looking for his cell phone in his pockets when it was right next to him in the center cup holder. Officers asked Mitchell if he has any weapons inside the vehicle and Mitchell stated no and denied a consent search of the vehicle. Officers advised Mitchell the vehicle was going to be impounded due to the license plate being expired and asked him to exit the vehicle. Mitchell was asked to exit the vehicle and he stated no, which officers again asked Mitchell out of the vehicle and he stated no again. Officers ordered Mitchell out of the vehicle and he grabbed his cell phone and started calling his mother on his cell phone. Officers told Mitchell if he does not exit the vehicle, he'll be removed from the vehicle and arrested. Mitchell opened the driver's side door, but did not exit. Officers again told Mitchell to exit or he would be removed and arrested. Mitchell finally exited the vehicle. 
During the inventory search of the vehicle, officers located a, a loaded Glock 23 40 caliber semi automatic handgun in the center council of the vehicle. The weapon was loaded with one round in the chamber and a fully loaded 15 round magazine. The gun was in a Blackhawk gray holster. Uh, officers asked Mitchell if he has a CPL license, and he stated he does not. Um, lean shows that the weapon is registered to Mitchell. And that's it, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you for examination of any witness. The court does find the um, the uh, offense charge is, has been committed, defendant, and there's probable cause being defendant committed that offense. And counsel? Attorney Corey Westmoreland praying on behalf of Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, your name for the record, please. Say my full name. Raphael Alexander Mitchell. Yes. All right. And so, um, counsel, as to the arraignment. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, we are prepared to waive a formal reading. My client stands mute. All right. The court will waive the formal reading. Enter plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment. Sir, you do have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to the to the to your attorney today, correct? Yes. And you also, um, you know, the court's also signed a petition for court appointed attorney for felony matters. You have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. You also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes, I do. And um, the court's going to enter plea of not guilty on this behalf, on your behalf, schedule this matter for a probable cause conference on June 13th at 10 15 a.m. And counsel asked to bond. Yes, Your Honor, I would like you to know that Mr. Mitchell has no prior criminal history whatsoever. Uh, he's not currently on probation or parole, he has no other pending matters. He is 27 years old. He currently is residing in Lincoln Park. He is gainfully employed at. Uh, Judge, as you've already heard, that the uh, gun is owned and registered to Mr. Mitchell. Uh, he was purchased legally. Uh, after speaking with him at length this morning, he did assure me that he would be appearing at all future court dates. He has no history of absconding from any honorable court. So I, I would just ask that all that be taken into account when assessing a bond on behalf of Mr. Mitchell. All right. And uh, Mr. Mitchell, have you ever failed to appear in court before, sir? I'm so sorry, one more time. Have you ever failed to appear in court? No, I have not. And you're not currently on probation or parole anywhere? No probation, no parole anywhere. Are you out on bond in any other jurisdiction? No, I do not. All right, and sir, um, do you have any other weapons or firearms at your home? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Those are going to have to go to the lined up police department for safekeeping during the pendency of this matter because you're not going to be allowed to possess or have access to any firearms and or any weapons. And detective, and any um, bond recommendation? Uh, just, just to assure his presence, uh, 5,000, 10%, and uh, not to operate a motor vehicle without uh, being uh, authorized to do so or being legally uh, plated. So do you have a valid license? Yes, I do have a valid license. You do? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, here's the court's going to do. Based upon um, the nature of the charges, the court uh, wants to ensure the pre your presence to return in court. The court's going to order a $5,000, 10 bond. Following bond conditions, sir. You're not to possess or have access to any firearms and or any weapons. You are to secure your weapons at the Wyandotte Police Department for safekeeping. They will yes, give you the um, instructions as to how to do that. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. If I could ask, am I being, well, during this pending situation down the line, am I being um, basically stripping of any type of CPL to receive down the line in the future? That's something you have to address with your attorney, sir. Okay, then. Thank you. Okay. I right, thank you. Okay. We're going to be off. Right Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. You have got to be kidding me. What? What is going on today? This is this is a joke. This is a joke. Today is an absolute joke. We need an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself sometimes. Oh my God, sir! 
put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of it. This what is wrong with everybody today? You know what, Miss Street? We're gonna start bringing people in person. People gonna learn how to act in a courtroom. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you hear it, ma'am? Ma'am, can you hear it? No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I have no, no patience for that. And trust me, out of the day, I'm going to be I'm the one that needs a drink. <laughs>